Hello, my noble band of outlaws. Outlaw Samurai coming at July with a video. Well, I was at work at my local Menards, and I picked this up. A dagger, literally. It's double-edged. It is the Master Force 11-inch double-edged duck knife. And astute viewers of my channel will take evidential note of Outlaw. What kind of blasphemy are you uh, trying to pull on us? You bought a knife with an entire edge serrated. Well, yes, but I also have an entire edge not serrated. That's the thing here, with a metal striking end. Now, why would I buy this knife? Well, simply because A, it's the closest thing I can readily find available to a dagger, and B, I honestly find think this would be a good beginner's bushcraft knife. Now, before any of you say anything, hear me out, okay? You got your serrated edge, you've got a straight edge, you've got a, basically a hammer, and a lanyard hole. Now, this is made of 8CR13 MLV steel. It's a stainless steel. With a weight of 6.6 .6 ounces, length of blade 6 inches, length of grip 5 inches, overall length 11 inches. Used for cutting duck board and flexible duck construction materials, ergonomic comfort grip with handle, with metal end cap, full tang for durability and strength. I'm going to turn my fan off for a minute. And it's a heat treated blade. <coughs> Don't worry, I have a trash can off camera. But yeah, the reason I find this to be a good beginner's bushcrafting knife is A, it's sub $10, and you get a decently thick blade that is full tang, mind you. and is of decent size and weight. Now, obviously you can't really do any kind of batoning with this knife in the conventional means. I believe if you were to strike down like this and kind of split smaller logs, you could. But the reason I consider this a good beginner's bushcrafter knife is because of the multiple features that it has. It has a solid edge for all your carving. A serrated edge for your food prep. And uh, softer saplings. Say you're out in the woods and you're, say you're a bushcrafter, you're out in the woods and your pocket saw breaks. And if you have this... Serrated edge basically works the same as a saw to an extent. It won't do as well of a job, but if you're just needing it to like saw in a little knock or just a little niche in the wood, it should do that job perfectly acceptably. And also serrated edges are very good for food prep since they don't necessarily dull as quickly as a solid edge at least in terms of food prep you can cut th you could saw your way through uh the bones of fish uh you could cut bread cut meat if you have bread with you like if you're on a survival bushcrafting camp and you brought limited uh rations the serrated edge would work very well for any kind of food prepping. While you have your solid edge 
for your carving, your whittling, and even skinning to an extent. This could also be used as a hunter's knife if needed be. Now, I know you've heard me say in the past, Outlaw, you say that you absolutely hate serrations on blades. Clarification there. I hate serrated edges that stop to a point and then a solid edge is formed. I actually do like serrated blades, but I prefer if the blade is either completely serrated or completely solid. In this instance, it gives you kind of the best of both worlds. It gives you the serrated edge complete and a complete solid edge. Now, also, let's say you're out in the woods and you're doing your bushcrafting thing, but you also, uh, let's just say for ease of convenience, you usually bring a small 16-ounce hammer with you when you're bushcrafting. But for whatever reason, you forgot this hammer this time, and you have to build a shelter, and you've carved out all the little holes that you can put wooden pegs in, and instead of having to find a rock that's randomly lying, instead of having to find a big rock that you can then lug back to your campsite and start hammering these pegs, well, just wrap a bit of cordage around, a, wrap, secure this to a stick with a bit of cordage, and uh, yeah, you have a hammer in the metal striking end. Obviously, honestly, this has more bushcrafting capability, this whole design, than I originally thought when I opened it. Now, the reason I say it's a dagger and not a knife is because daggers are double-edged. Knives are single-edged, by definition. Now, I know what you've been waiting for ever so patiently. And that is an edge test. Luckily, I have a whole stack of rebate forms. So it does come sharp, and obviously, the serrated edge isn't really meant to slice through paper, but as we can see, it can do it. The serrated edge is really meant for uh, that sawing kind of having to saw through the cut instead of slicing through. And honestly, I find that for, I've actually found that for uh, carving notches into wood, a serrated edge actually does better. Like it will dig out more wood faster than using the smooth edge. Now you can obviously go back in and kind of smooth out your cut with the smooth edge if you so were inclined. But yeah, all in all, I feel like this would be a very good beginner's bushcrafting knife that you could give to somebody, including the uh, insulation knife that I've done a review of before. Now, obviously, I'd be amiss if I didn't also include the scabbard. It's the same as pretty much all the other uh, Master Force fixed blades. Just a simple plastic scabbard, simple belt loop, no real bells and whistles. It has a drainage hole, which I am a big fan of drainage holes on plastic scabbards and sheaths in general. Because of the simple fact that uh, even though this is stainless steel, it will still rust 
tarnish and degrade if not properly taken care of. Now we shall see the... Yeah, that's a misconception. Stainless steel does rust. It's just a lot harder for it to rust because of the chromium and other metals added to it. Let's see the fit of this knife. As always, the vigorous shake test. Okay, that actually hurt my arm a bit, but as we can see, it has perfect retention. But, just a little bit of a pull and it's out. Slides in perfectly well, clicks in nicely. You can push it out with your thumb if you are so inclined. And it has a bit of rattle, but at the end of the day, we must remember that this is a sub $15 knife. All in all, I believe this knife would be very well suited to the beginner bushcrafter. Now, obviously, bushcrafting knives, the single edge versions, you could, theoretically, uh, push with your thumb on the spines of the blades. And this really loses some of that. This really does limit you on your pushing ability. You can push it right here or right here on the Ricasso areas. So yeah, your ability overall to kind of gain control by putting your thumb on the blade is lost because of its double-edged nature. But you need to also think that beginner bushcrafters really aren't going to be doing any real kind of meticulous, like really delicate carving that requires a whole lot of control. And if you're a minimalist like me, where you want to do the absolute bare minimum to actually survive, then I say screw the fancy carving. If it works, it works. Okay, that's just redneck philosophy. Okay, it don't need to look pretty as long as it works. So I feel like this is for the pretty much utilitarian, the minimalist bushcrafter, if you will, that just needs a sharp implement that can also bash the hell out of shit with the blunt end. So, I also believe that the hammer part adds to its bushcrafting value because sometimes you really just need to bash the hell out of something. Like a nail, even if it's a nail and you don't have a hammer with you, just bash the hell out of it. And like I said, you can still tie it to a stick and make it into a hammer. Hell, you know the uh, logging axes? that have spikes on the back that you ram into the log to pull. Well, if you tie this thing to a stick, you have a hammer, and if need be, flip it around, you have a spike. Okay, you've essentially... Ooh, don't wanna drop that, don't wanna drop this damn thing. If you tie this thing to a stick, you've essentially made a fucking war hammer. Okay. Hammer side, spike side, you have a war hammer bushcrafting knife. You know, now that I think about that, I might actually try, I might actually attempt to do that modification. Stay tuned for that. But until next time, my noble band of outlaws, outlaw samurai tells all y'all, be crazy rednecks, be safe and use your weapons. I'm out, peace, and I hope you enjoyed this kind of unboxing slash ramble review of this knife. I may do a cutting video like I did with the ugly stick. I may not. Depends on if I have time. I'm planning to kind of catch up on house chores over the next couple of days. Mainly laundry. So I'm out. Peace.